On today's Locked on Thunder podcast, we're joined by Richard Stamen to talk about the NBA draft, Scoot versus Victor, college prospects to watch, and who you should keep an eye on this week during Feast Week in College Hoops. All that coming up on today's Locked on Thunder podcast, your team every day. You are Locked on Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Rylan Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show, LO Thunder Pod at gmail.com. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball today. We're joined by a very special guest as this show is brought to you by Bet Online. You go there right now and they have you cover this year for more props, odds, and lines and air before Bet Online where the game starts. Richard Stamen at Mavs Draft on Twitter and NBA Draft Film on Instagram as we kind of have to work around Twitter possibly falling apart. But Richard, you're joining <laughs> us again uh, for like the third or fourth year now of draft coverage as we kick it off here in the regular season. How you been, man? Dude. I'm happy to be back. Um, it's, you know, like you said, it's been a, a little bit of chaos on our primary means of communication in, uh, in Twitter, but I'm excited. The Instagram experience seems to be going really well. I can get away with posting way more content than people actually care about and more on Instagram than on Twitter, which is awesome. Um, you know, I'm excited for that move. Other than that, though, NBA draft season is back. Now, unfortunately for you, it looks like the Thunder – look like the best team in the league. So, you know, hard for you to not care about the draft this year and the, and the best draft like ever. It's a, it's a double-edged sword, really. I mean, it's the pros and cons, but yeah, you can find him on Twitter uh, and Instagram. I'm also on Instagram. We also made a uh, content on Instagram that we can't really put on Twitter. Uh, Tavon Austin, Alexei Poloshevsky style highlight film uh, is on Instagram over there at Rylan or style. Same handle for both Instagram and uh, Twitter. Now, Richard, Let's talk first about the top of the draft. Now, you mentioned it. The Thunder are playing really good basketball and uh, in all likelihood will not find themselves at the top of this draft, and despite it being a loaded historic draft. Now, there's still a lot that can change. The Thunder are 7-8, and eight, and they're the 10th you know, worst team in the league. However you want to put it on Tankathon, they're at 10 right now. And it's still technically a 10% chance to go top four, uh, which who knows what could happen there. But nonetheless, top of this draft. Richard, I got to watch Scoot Henderson in OKC twice this week. He plays for Ignite just as Jalen Green did. I asked him about that connection with him, Jalen Green, you know, Kate Cunningham, Victor Mignogna. He didn't like that question very much, but I, I sat there watching him at the scores table, just run up and down the floor, look elite, look like a superstar, look like an NBA player. And I kept thinking, you know, I'm gonna have to tell Richard that this is my new Jalen Green. Like I, I spent all of the 21 draft cycle trying to convince you Hey, Jalen Green, don't write him off over Cade Cunningham yet. And we were we were both there 1B. Is Scoot Henderson 2 or is he 1B? Because to me, he's 1B. Yeah, he's 1B. Um, also, yeah, I was too low. I way over-evaluated or overthought, I guess. Jalen Green, I really thought his handle wouldn't be as good as it is. Uh, way underestimated him. You were right. I don't know if he's necessarily going to be better than Cade. That's still up for debate. But um, I was too low on him. I, I think with Scoot, though, like, I mean, he's just – this is his second year in the G League. He wasn't even draft eligible last year. Like, he's so young, so polished, and there's still so much room to grow. Like, that combination of those three is just so intriguing that it wouldn't shock me. Like, you never know. With Victor has had past injury history over in Europe, it wouldn't shock me if something does come up, especially if it's closer to the draft. If, like – I mean, I'm not wishing injury, obviously, on him. I, I hope we get a full healthy season because also what Victor's doing is special. But if there are injury concerns, Scoot might really be on the table for the number one pick. Like I, I think he's more on the table than people realize he is. Obviously, Victor's, I think, the more talented player given his size. But Scoot might be more the, the more feasible player. I mean, a guard, it's a guard-driven league. Like, and he's a lead at, at guard play. You mentioned the, that, that lead into the next question. All throughout the 21 cycle, you always said Katie Cunningham 100%. 
What's the percentage of Victor Mignogna going to one overall? Is there is there a scenario where a certain front office, a certain coaching staff grabs that number one overall pick and they get scared off by, we've never seen this type of player before. He has a little bit of an injury history. How long can he be sustainable? Will this work in the NBA? What, how does it fit with our team? And then they go scoot over Victor. What's kind of your percentage of Victor being number one? Is it 100% or is it 99? Is there a sliver of a chance? It's it's a heavy favorite for Victor. It's definitely over like 70 or 80%. It's not like in 2021, I said it from like, whenever the season starts, I think it was like actually almost this time two years ago, which is nuts to think, first of all. Um, but like from the get-go, Cade was kind of a lock to go number one. The big board position was always up for debate, but the stuff I'd heard was like, nobody's going to pass up Cade because the risk is too high. If you go, Because then you look like you big-brained it and you're like, what if you draft an absolute bust? And, you know, obviously really at the top of the draft in that 2021 class, it really couldn't happen, luckily. But you never know. Sometimes it, weird things do play out. I mean, Markel Fultz, for example, was supposed to be one of the safest number one picks in, in recent memory. And look at him now. So uh, I say that as I'm wearing like a magic shirt. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, like, I, I do think that there is a chance that he does go number one. It's not likely, but there, it is on the table. So with, with those two guys for the Thunder, let's just let's just live in this pretend world where the Thunder currently have a shot to get them. Because, I mean, this season can go any any which way from here on out. We're still only in November. Like, it feels like the season's been going on forever. We're just now a month into the season. Uh, so with that being said, having watched Scoot play and just really tracking him the entire game, he's playing a lot off ball for Ignite. They're, he's warming up. Even like in warmest, he's playing off ball. He's trying to work on his catch and shoot ability, coming off screens in his in his pregame routine. The Thunder had the number one overall pick. Let's just say, I you know, in the sense of forget about reputation, forget about what's supposed to happen. In your mind, who would you feel more comfortable having for the next nine years in this core, Victor Mignana or Scoot Henderson with the Thunder? Man, that is really tough because you look at the recent draft picks. I mean, just look at since twenty twenty, and then throw in SGA, obviously the guards guards have been pretty popular. I mean, Josh Giddy, Trey mann has been good. Obviously I don't need to tell the audience that like SGA is rising towards superstardom. And then you just drafted Chet Holmgren. What do you do? Like at that point, I, I think it is weird to draft Victor Wimitama and Chet, but also at the same time, like the upside of that working is just one of one. Like, I don't think we'd ever seen anything. We will have ever seen anything like that. But also if you paired Scoot and SGA, you, are probably going to be in the running in two years for having one of the best backwards. So what do you do with that? It's kind of which it's not a pick your poison because the poison of it is like you have way too much overlap and then you're faced with way tough decisions. You have to kind of consolidate your roster. I, I would personally go with Victor Wemanyama though, if they had to choose one. And that's where I'm at too. I, I think that you, it, it, with the thunder specifically, you kind of just let your talent evaluation speak for itself because either one, Either Victor plus Chet is kind of awkward at first, or Scoop plus SGA and Josh Giddy, all three needing the ball, is awkward at first. So it's going to be awkward at first no matter who you draft, and you're going to have to make some consolidation with your roster and some decisions on how to how you, you play and, and, and change your play style for whoever you bring in. So you might as well take whoever you think is the, just the best player. And with the Thunder, of course, they've shown last year, they will take the swing on a guy who has a perceived you know, low floor, like Chet Holmgren had all these questions about his frame entering the draft uh, for right or wrong, and they'll take the high upside swing. And that's, I think that that's the right mode to go with. And so the high upside swing of having Victor play the four or five and Chet play the four or five together is just, that would be immaculate. Put poke with the three, poke with the three, Victor at the four, Chet at the five, jo uh, Josh at the two and uh, SG at the one. That, that would be a weird lineup that I really hope we see one day. I think you muted yourself. Sorry. The versatility that the Thunder could have with this, with the 2023 NBA draft hitting there, it's special. And that's why it's such a fun class com combined with just the overall talent. You look at the Thunder, I think they're probably the most intriguing number one or number two pick that could happen. And also, like, you factor in, they get the three, four, five. I mean, the Thunder have, I think, three picks next year, not even including their own. And two picks after, I think, not including their own in 2025. So they have ammo to move up to. And this draft is not just about Scoot Henderson and Victor Mignogna. We're going to get into the college prospects and how loaded this draft is and who we're looking forward to watching throughout the season and on Feast Week coming up. But today's show is brought to you by Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's biggest minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn to 
do anything you want to learn how to do. I mean, you can even learn comedy. Like there's there's comedy classes on there to teach you how to have a better delivery in your stand up. There, there there's do it yourself classes as well. Richard, is there any sort of course that you would be interested in taking with our good friends at Masterclass to kind of learn how to get better? Is there any hobby you're looking to get better at right now? Hey, I need that comedy one bad. I think I'm funny, but I don't think I actually am that funny. <laughs> so maybe it, it's that. tough. They, they teach you how to give the delivery on the stand up. If you're interested in the kind of going to some open mic nights or improv classes. Uh, and again, they have like arts and crafts stuff. They have podcast stuff, like whatever you're looking for. Masterclass has a course just for you. And it, it's truly a class. Like that's been the most surprising part to me is diving into Masterclass and realizing the people who are running these classes, the celebrities, the big names, they're taking it seriously. They're giving you like course instructions. If you're in college or, or high school, whatever, it's actually very interesting to check it out. So please go check it out. Masterclass. I highly recommend you check it out today. This holiday, give one annual membership and get one free by going to masterclass.com slash locked on today. That's masterclass.com slash locked on today. Terms and conditions do apply, but it's a great holiday uh, treat. If you're looking for something to spruce up your Christmas shopping list. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, media member and editor-in-chief over at thundersintentions.com, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Ryland underscore Styles. Richard, for your second listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. We both love it. It gives you the biggest stories from around sports in under 30 minutes or less, every single sport you need. It's a great daily briefing of what's happening in sports. Now, Richard, you're here to brief us on the NBA draft as you host Locked on NBA Big Board uh, and, and have been diving into these guys all throughout the, the cycle and even uh, up until now. So we talked a lot about Victor Mignogna and Scoot Henderson, Richard, but this draft goes deep. Now, I, I've thrown my number out on this podcast of how many people I think could truly be franchise changers, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label that as franchise changers being a top three member of your core that you hope can win you a championship in your franchise. So with that parameter... What's your number for how many guys you think can kind of be franchise changing? Man, I, I think in terms of just that absolute number one, there's two of them. It's Victor Weminyama and Scoot Henderson. But when you look at the rest of the class, I mean, I, there's a lot of guys we haven't even seen yet. Like Nick Smith and Kim Whitmore really haven't even done, they haven't played, I don't think. And, I, and Dariq Whitehead, I know Nick Smith has actually, but we just haven't seen a ton of him. Dariq Whitehead and Cam Whitmore actually haven't played. And Dariq Whitehead could be one of those guys. Then you factor in the Thompson twins who are playing an OTE now that are flags with them. They can't shoot and they're 20 years old, still playing high school competition. So there are flags, but if they hit, I mean, those are franchise changers. There's really up to like seven or eight guys that just scream. And this is like all just in my top 14. Like there's guys who like every, every year, there's somebody who was unexpected that goes post lottery. That is a franchise changer. So it doesn't even factor those guys. in. like, it's a loaded class. That is my exact number. Seven to eight is, is what I've been hearing and what I've been seeing myself. Uh, now, to put you on the spot here, before we got, dive into kind of the, the best games to watch in college basketball this upcoming week, because we're going to start having you on routinely as we do throughout the entire draft process from here on out. Who's your number three? Because my number three is Cam Whitmore. I, I think Cam Whitmore is just the guy that I would go with. If I, if I you know, quote unquote, lost the lottery and got the third selection, I would I would turn in the card for Cam Whitmore before before I'm even on the clock, so I'd have the first three picks starting lined out. But who who is your three right now? It's probably not as definitive as that because because you know I'm sure that this draft is is very competitive on your board, obviously. But who is your three right now? Yeah, I haven't really even updated it since the season started. I just think it's going to be reactionary, so I will say that. So I've kind of just gone off my preseason. My preseason number three is Derek Lively at Duke. Now, unfortunately, he's been a little bit hindered by injury, missed the first game. I uh, only played two games, and I think he's only played like 35 minutes or something like that. But uh, you can see his defense is just so dominant, even when he's played in those minutes. And I think he'll be really good at the rim, too, on offense. So I really like him. But if I had to adjust it right now, it's actually, oddly enough, nothing that, nothing that comes from what has happened in the first two weeks of college basketball. It's really... Um, I like Dariq Whitehead. I think the more we think about it, a uh, three-level scorer who can create his own shot at 6'6", it's a moneymaker. He's a combo guard, and that size is really good. I don't think he's a wing. I, I truly think he's a one-slash-two. I think it's him. 
Well, we've seen college basketball tip off, and there's a few landmarks before Feast Week, but it's really Feast Week where everybody kind of gets involved and watches college hoops. You know, you do have the opening night. You have the aircraft carrier game, which they brought back this year, and the Champions Classic. But Feast Week is where it starts for most college basketball fans. You're off of work. You're out of school. You're just hanging out, and there's basketball on pretty much all day, which is heaven for hoops junkies like us. What What are some games and matchups that you're looking for uh, and you're excited for to watch from a from a talent evaluation standpoint for the draft. Yeah, I'll start with, um, I think it's a continental tire tournament or something. I forget what the exact, uh, it's the main event, excuse me, that's what it's called. And hopefully the main event turns into this, what would be an outstanding matchup. And that could be Baylor versus UCLA. UCLA has a potential to maybe even three first round talents at this point. All right, so at the guard, at the guard spots, you know, you could see, like uh, what's Keontae George go against Amari Bailey, who Amari Bailey's exceeded my expectations just a little bit. And we'd also be able to see Adam Bona, who is somebody who is a very versatile big man, reminds me a little bit of Musa Diabate. Uh, Jalen Clark has been outstanding to start the year for UCLA. I think he's one of the most improved players and could rise into the top 40. So all those matchups, you know, Adam Bona being switched on to Keontae George is a major test. I'm really excited for that one. So, with the feast week coming about the continental tire main event tournament is going to be a good one, but the Jayhawks, and you know, I was going to throw the Jayhawks in here. They're also in a feast week tournament as they always participate. And we did see Grady Dick just take over the game against Duke. Where do you have Grady Dick in your mind as, as, him translating to the NBA on this small sample size. This, this remember folks, we're recording this in November. If you're listening to this way later, it's November. So a lot of these opinions can change, but as of right now, where do you have Grady Dick? Yeah. Grady Dick right now is definitely risen for me. Um, I have to be careful with my word choice, but I, uh, I think, he, <laughs> I think he's somebody who you'll get best shooter in the draft. Uh, give me just a minute. I'm sorry. I'm too immature, but um, you'll get best shooter in the draft. And generally, that goes, that's a lottery pick. And, all, and recently, Corey Kispert, Oche Baji were considered the best shooter in the draft, and they were lottery guys and they were upperclassmen. Grady Dick being a f- freshman in the lottery is a huge game changer. And he has, he's 6'8. Uh, again, yeah, gotta watch my wording there, but uh, <laughs> I apologize for my immaturity. But no, you have to, like, given how tall he is and then also just his shooting ability, like, he, he very well could be a lottery. Right now, I have him around 20. Yeah, I think he could sneak into the lottery if he continues to play this way. But again, I mean, that's that's a long ways off. But I, I think he could sneak in. Now, I'm interested in guys like Cam Whitmore who are going to get off to a delayed start. Do you worry about how that impacts their uh, their draft stock at all? Yeah, I mean, it, how you it's always this first impressions matter, right? And I think there's two elements to look at it. Like one, people care about who they saw first. Like there's always that first memory holds a certain weight. And when they are delayed when they're late to the party, it's sometimes like, oh, well, but he didn't do what the other guy did. And it's just like a, almost a bias. But the other thing is, is I think when you look at how he's coming back from injury, he's not going to be like most guys don't look 100 percent in their first game back or something. So I think like if he shot like three of 11, I think it's going to raise way too many red flags that shouldn't be raised where it's more just, hey, be patient. It happens all the time in the NBA where shooters come back and their shot just isn't there. I know this is not at all one-to-one not only of the player or anything but also the caliber of the player but like one example i always think of is gary harris last year like obviously i'm wearing a magic shirt so like you knew what the magic reference is coming up but like last year he came back and it took him about 20 games to really get going he didn't look like he knew how to shoot the ball and then he still ended the year above league average from shooting from three so you know it's, sometimes it's not easy to get your legs under you and things like that the shot consistency won't be there so i think it's going to raise some unnecessary red flags especially if he doesn't get off to a hot start I'm going to ask you a very important question after the break about who gives you the most bang for your buck and how do you evaluate draft talent? But first I want to tell you right now that this show is brought to you by bet online, bet online is incredible. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Go there right now to get the odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball, soccer, esports, MMA, boxing, UFC, all that fun stuff at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find them at BetOnline as well. You are always going to get the fastest and easiest way to bet on everything at BetOnline.net where the game starts. 
And Richard, the Thunder play tonight in Memphis. And so if you hop on over to betonline.net, you just open up their sports book, go to basketball, and boom, we have the odds for tonight. And the Thunder are six and a half point underdogs on the road in Memphis. Now, no Trey Mann, no Darius Baisley again, and no Isaiah Joe tonight for the Thunder. What are you going to bet on right now? If, if, if I made you bet, you, you throw your picks out every day on Twitter. I've, I've been inspired by you to keep track of my picks this year as well. What's your bet tonight for the Thunder six and a half point dogs in Memphis? Yeah, I, I actually think uh, one definitely take the spread, but um, I, I don't know what to make of it. That's a really tough one because Desmond Bain is out and Memphis could kind of go either way. And Oklahoma City is just incapable of playing poorly. So I, I wouldn't shock me if they stole this one. Except for one of the last times they played Memphis. They played very poorly on that day. But we won't talk about that, that anymore. That that does not count. That was an anomaly. Go check it out today. BetOnline.net. We are back on the Locked On Thunder Podcast. On the Locked On Podcast Network. Your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Ella Thunder Pod. Also on Instagram, Ryland underscore Styles as well. Richard. We're back. Check out Lockdown Sports today for your second list. Remember, we're over over here. Now, Richard, I have a question for you that I think that you are more than equipped to answer, even though I did not prep you for this question beforehand. Let's say there's somebody out there who, you know, has a family, wife, kids, husband, kids, partner, kids, everything, a job. They have work. They have side hobbies, whatever. They want to follow the thunder each and every game. Their schedule's pretty booked. But they can make room to watch one team, one college team. They can follow just, just the one team who gives you the most bang for your buck. If you could only watch every game of this specific college for me, I'm going to say Arkansas. I think Arkansas gives you the biggest value. If you can only invest in watching one school, but who is it going to be for you? So side question, is this for co- just college purposes or just NBA draft? This purposes? is for NBA draft purposes. They want to get involved in NBA draft, but they can only they can only find time to watch one school's games a week. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, – I'm going to go with Duke. I think they have six, seven NBA guys down the road one way or the other, probably maybe five to six. I think they're the team. They they have long-term guys that uh, – guys that could be picked this year, but seen as guys that like, hey, we're not trying to get your one value – we're trying to get year two, three, four, or plus whatever. And they also have guys that could compete for rookie of the year, kind of like Derek Whitehead. The reason with Arkansas is that, you know, you have Nick Smith, Anthony Black, Jordan Walsh, but you also have SEC basketball. So when you're watching Arkansas, you're going to get to watch the SEC. And I think that there's probably more NBA draft prospects in the SEC than the ACC. The ACC is pretty down right now overall, but kind of what's, what's your thought process there? Hey, all I'm saying is you got Duke, North Carolina twice. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's the right. <laughs> if I if I could only watch one one college game, uh, I get the I get the best of both worlds: the college atmosphere and the NBA draft prospects. I, I would I would go Duke, Carolina twice. Plus the ACC tournament's really awesome, and then everybody's gonna watch March Madness of every school because we're just all degenerates. But uh, I wanted to ask you that. Now, before we get out of here, I, I, this is kind of our 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 primer for the draft. We're gonna talk more uh, about uh, the. NBA draft as individual players in the future. We're going to be, you're going to be here at least bi-weekly, if not weekly from here on out. And of course, in the off season, you're here every single week, almost daily talking drafts with us because we're so enamored with the draft. So more of a broader question again, then we're going to get to the nitty gritty next week for you. How comfortable, what, what makes you the most comfortable? The Just with the, the draft. Right. Oh, okay. So, so the, the question being, you feel the most comfortable in your analysis of these players if they come from the G League, the uh, college route, or kind of like overtime elite, whatever you want to call that route. Like y- you think that you know the most about players if you and, and scout them against these competitions and you feel the best about your analysis on which level? I think it's college. It's the one that I've been doing the longest. Um, G League's tough because that's only been around, I think this is year three of the Ignite, maybe two, three. I can't three. remember. Year three, it's year three. Um, so that's a little bit tough. Europe is still something I'm learning to evaluate because context is m- incredibly important. I honestly just follow what Rafael Bargo says and I'm like, all right, cool. I did that. And then, uh, pre high, pre college is really tough because everybody looks like a superstar. Um, but Hey, re re coming on here every week. Uh, you have to call me thunder draft, I guess, or something now. 
I've been trying to get you to change the name for a long time, but you, you, you've you've now incorporated the magic in there. You're now Mavericks Magic Draft, but we, I'm still trying to get you to do the Slash Thunder. Hey, we still haven't gotten that yet uh, for OKC, but I'm working on it still, folks. But that's Richard Stamen. You can follow him on Twitter, at Mavs Draft. Follow him on Instagram, NBA Draft Film, uh, and listen to him on Lockdown NBA Big Board. Richard, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Until tomorrow, be good and be good to one another.